All right, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, <clears throat> the elect of Yahweh, Baal Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem Kodash. Once again, it's another video coming to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Baal Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem Kodash. All praises and glories definitely do. So the title of this video will be how can he be the most high when he kept acknowledging the most high how can he be the most high as in god that's what the people of the world call the heavenly father or the most high they call him god which his name is yahweh how can he who's the he yahweh shy which is the only begotten son of the heavenly father the firstborn of all creation the first spirit created how can he be the most high when he kept acknowledging the most high so that's pretty much a question for vocab malone and all the wacky tacky christians that actually believe that the only begotten son of the most high is the most high and that just shows right there that the holy spirit is not dealing with them they do not understand the scriptures to quote a scripture that you err not knowing the scriptures and the word err means to make a mistake now what inspired me a couple of videos inspired me the first one was uh the brother from vegas uh Elder Karataza, Elder Karataza of uh, GMS Vegas Sit Downs. He did a video entitled Heyman Malone is definitely wrong again. Well, at least he's consistent. Talking about vocab Malone, he's consistent in his ignorance and making mistakes. Um. And then the second video was a video that was put up by Elder Pasta entitled Vocab Malone is Wrong Again Creation. And I'm going to play a portion of Elder Pasta's video. It's kind of heavy because um, I watched the video from the brother from Vegas and I was, um, I got the inspiration there. And then as I watched, Apostle Tar's video, he said that all you brothers should jump on it. I think he said he's going to do a series. So I was like, oh man, so I'm, I guess I'm in the right spirit that I selected this topic this morning, you know. It's all spiritual. So without further ado, I'm going to get into it. But let me play a portion of um, Elder Apostle's video because this guy, this is why I named my video. How can he be the most high when he kept acknowledging the most high? This guy, Vocab Malone, you know, the, the guy you see there with the with the hat and the glasses. Not the not the bald head dude. For those of you that don't know, those of you that are new to this, not the bald head black dude. <laughs> that ain't Vocab. The guy next to him, that's Vocab, the infamous Vocab Malone. And... Um, he actually believes that the only begotten son of the most high is the most high okay so we're going to go through some scriptures and to show those of you that the holy spirit is working with you actually working with you you're going to see that the only begotten son of the most high is not the most high okay he is the only begotten son of the most high yes he was created unlike the most high who doesn't have a beginning or an end that's why in the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter, let me go there real quick. By the way, the blue letter Bible been acting funny, man. So I don't know. <laughs> Might have to look for a better, have to look for another Bible. Because <laughs> it, it, see, 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 this is what I mean. You see, once you go to a, a book, you're supposed to hit on the quick navigator and it's supposed to take you all around the Bible. It's supposed to take you to the different books, but it doesn't do that anymore. 
I think they I, I think they're doing something to the blue letter Bible. But anyway, Daniel seven and nine, it says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit. That's the that's the most high himself, the one the people of the world call God, which his name is Yahweh. Yahweh, that's his name, right? Whose garment was white as snow, and he wasn't wearing no t-shirt, okay? He wasn't wearing no t-shirt with a border of blue and fringes. He actually wore a garment down to the foot, okay? There's a scripture in the book of Isaiah where it talked about the train of his garment. His garment was so long, okay? That's a real garment. For those of you Israelites who insist on taking an undergarment, a t-shirt that was invented back in 1898, do your research. A t-shirt that was invented back, in, well, later it was called a t-shirt. First it was called, before it was called a t-shirt, it was called an undergarment. Look, look it up, research it. Then later it got the name t-shirt. All right, a t-shirt with a board of blue and fringes is not a garment, okay? Anyway, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool, which, which symbolizes what? That he was a so-called black man. He looked like a so-called black man, what you would call a so-called a, a black man. We say so-called because there's no such thing as a black man. Okay, his throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. So there you go. So what's what's the point? The point is the ancient of days, meaning he has no beginning, he has no end. And we can't possibly explain that. That is the heavenly father. Now, however, his only begotten son had a beginning. He was the first spirit created. And that's another video that I'm going to do uh, in relation to the series. OK, but first, let's tackle the topic of uh, of the Son of the Heavenly Father not being the Heavenly Father, okay? So what I'm going to do is go to uh, Elder Pastor's video, and um, I didn't get to watch the whole video, which I'm going to do once I'm done with this video. But um, let me play it from the, uh, I think it's around the fifth minute. Let's check it out. The Lord said, um, I'm not going to go to the precept. You can put it in the description, whatever. He said in uh, St. John 4, he said, my meat is to do the will of him. He told the disciples that. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me. Mm -hmm. Is that equal? Basically, he was on a mission from the Father. Mm -hmm. He told the Father on the cross... Eli, Eli, you know the rest of the story. What he said was, Eli, Eli, he said, Allah, ya, Allah, ya, my God, my God. He goes on to say, why has thou forsaken me? Now, if they're equal, why would he say that? Exactly. These are solid points. All right? And, and that, see, that lines up with my title. Uh, why did he keep acknowledging the Most High? He did it on the cross. You just heard what Elder Pastor said, he said, um, Yahweh Shai said, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabachthani, me and my power, my power, why hast thou forsaken me? You heard him say it in the, in the uh, ancient Hebrew, Elder, you know, Elder Pastor. So, uh, yeah, if he is the Most High, why would he say that on the cross? All right. <laughs> well, he was crying to his father. Why have you forsaken me? If he is the father, why would he say that? It doesn't make any sense. This is why we call you guys, guys like Vocab Malone. This is why we call you wacky and tacky. You don't make any sense. Okay? Let's listen some more. Now, if they're equal, why would he say that? Why wouldn't he say, yes, I'm on the cross right now. I'm catching a lot of hell. <laughs> but me, that Father, and the Holy Spirit, we came up with this and we all decided to do this. He feels rejected. Right. So what the hell are you talking about, Volcan? There's a Yeah, who was he crying to? When he was on the cross, Volcan, who was he crying to? And why, if he is the Father, why did he feel rejected? His statement, Yahweh Shai's statement, proved he felt rejected. Why have you forsaken me? Who is he speaking to? What, himself? It doesn't make any sense. 
marijuana. You cannot, you cannot go, you cannot come to the Lord. Uh, what is that? Uh, St. John 6, 43, 44 verse. I'm not going to go to it. It says, you cannot come to me except the Father. Mm -hmm. Draw him. He's, he's drawn in the Father. It's the reaction, the, the action of the Father that puts the Spirit on you to, to be drawn to the Messiah. Right. Uh, St. John, uh, what is that? I just had it fill in my mind. I just said it. 14 and 6. I believe it was the 6th verse. He says, um, no man, no man can come. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read that. Let me go ahead and read that. Where am I? Okay, you come over here. John 14. Yahushai or Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So you just can't go directly to the Father. That's right. When, when we say the prayers in Hebrew, we say Yahweh Bahasham in the name of Yahushai. It says, Yeah, because there's a chain of command. And, and the Heavenly Father said it so. In reality, the only one the Heavenly Father is really listening to is His only begotten Son. And He listens to us through His only begotten Son. Like Yahweh I said, no man can come unto the Father but by, by Him, through Him. And St. John... What is that? Six... And uh, Yahweh had to sacrifice himself on the cross to get that privilege. All right, for us to have the privilege of going to the Father, we have to go through Yahweh who had to sacrifice himself on the cross to get that privilege. Uh, the key point is right here. Well, let me go right to the point. Forty-four verse. No man can come to me except the Father, a different entity, which have sent me. Did the Lord send himself? Could the Lord have said, no, Father, you won't go. And me, the Son, I'm going to save you. No. Father, the Father, the Heavenly Father, as the Christians say, Father God, that's number one. The Lord, that's number two. And the Holy Spirit. So you can get an understanding in your mind to put a picture in your mind what the Holy Spirit is. It's the angels. So you can, so you can get a yeah. picture in your mind. Yeah, that's exactly what the Holy Spirit is. And that's going to be another video, too, that, you know, we've tackled that topic in the past. We're going to keep, you know, back to the basics. Like um, Elder Pastor coined that phrase, back to the basics. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go back to the basics. Like I said, why did he say, uh, Eli, Eli, why did he say, Aliya, Aliya, my power, my, my God, my God, why is thou forsaken? Why did he say that? If he's co-equal with the Most High. Exactly. And these these are points that you cannot refute, vocab, but you're going to do it anyway because you're the devil. That's why, you know, that's one of the signs that shows us that you're an Edomite. All right? He said, 
And I, like I said, in John 4, I, my will is to do the will of him. Another sign is you can't rap. Okay? <laughs> you can't rap. If you really could rap, you wouldn't be involved in, in this Christian nonsense that you're involved in if you really had the talent of rapping. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me in to finish his work. You would try to be the next, uh, uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, which he's a Jake, the guy from Detroit. What the hell is his name? Yeah. Slim Shady. <laughs> right? The hell is his name? One of his alter egos is Slim Shady. His name is escaping me right now. Eminem, there you go. Marshall Mathers, I, I believe that's his real name. You would try to be the next Eminem. And it, but the difference is he's a Jake. Eminem's a Jake, and he actually has talent. Unlike you, Vocab Malone. Had he not finished his work, he would have failed. And he would have had, had to answer a higher power, which is the Heavenly Father. So and it was the Father that rose him. It was the Father that said, this is my beloved son in whom, whom I am well pleased. Yeah, the Heavenly Father, one of his titles is the Father of Spirits. Right? Let me show you that. I hope the Blue Letter Bible behaves itself. Oh, oh it's working. I, I can't believe it. <laughs> it works when it wants to, I guess. Um, we're going to, what is that, Hebrews, the Father of Spirits. Let me see if I can find that. The Father, the Father, the Father of Spirits. There we go. Now write these scriptures down, man. Keep telling you guys out there, write these scriptures down. Hebrews 12 and 9, it says, Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which cor corrected us, and we gave them reverence. That's our earthly fathers. How shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? So the point is, if the heavenly father, right, the most high, the one people call God, which his name is Yahweh, if he created the spirits, right, he's one of his titles is the father of spirits, right? There had to be a first spirit created. They had to be a first, a very first spirit created because he's the father of spirits. He created spirits. We're, we're nothing but spirits and bodies, right? I always quote that song uh, by the group, The Police, uh, from the album, uh, what is it, uh, Ghost in the Machine? We are spirits in the material world. All right, we're nothing but spirits and bodies. That's part of that material world, these bodies, right? They had to be a first spirit created. Now, who's that first spirit created? You got it. That's the one the world calls Jesus Christ ignorantly, which his name is Yahweh Shai in the ancient Hebrew. He was the very first spirit created. What don't you understand about that vocab? He was the very first spirit created. One of the titles of the Heavenly Father is the Father of Spirits. Yahweh Shai was the very first spirit created. The first, as it is written, the firstborn of the creation. Let's get that. That's powerful right there. The firstborn of the creation. That is Yahweh Shai. That's why Yahweh Shai made a statement. He said in the book of Revelation, he said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Now, if you know your Greek, the word Alpha is a Greek word meaning the beginning or beginning. It means beginning. It's from the Greek, Alpha. Okay? I mean, what don't you get about that? Let's type in firstborn. Oh, man. See, I wanted to narrow it. I think it's somewhere in Colossians. Somewhere in the book of Colossians. There it is. That's what I'm looking for. The book of Colossians which was a letter written to the Israelites in Coloss. Uh, now, in the title you see, it says the incomparable 
Christ, right? Which his name is Yahweh Shai. His name is not Christ. I'm just reading what, what, what is there, right? So you know the subject matter is dealing with Yahweh Shai, right? So let's go right to the point, the 15th verse. Well, let's start at the four. You know what? Let's start at the 13th verse. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness. That's what Yahweh Shai has done for us, right? And have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, right? Who's it? Hold up. Who's his dear son? His dear son is Yahweh Shai. Right? The firstborn, the first spirit created, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Right? And that's one of the things Yahweh Shai came to do. He came to die on the cross so our sins could be forgiven by the Heavenly Father, by Yahweh Shai sacrificing himself on the cross. And, and whose sins? The sins of the nation of Israel. Right? The Israelites. Now, here's the point. Who is the image of the invisible Heavenly Father? Meaning what? He looks like his father. That's what that means. He is not actually his father. He looks like his father. Okay? Who is the image of the invisible power, the, the Heavenly Father, the firstborn of every creature? Now, the Heavenly Father is not the firstborn of every, every creature. The Heavenly Father has no beginning and he has no end. So, who is the firstborn of his creation? Who? That's the only begotten Son. The world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. His name is Yahweh Shai. He is the firstborn of creation. He's the first spirit created. Unlike the Heavenly Father who doesn't have, who was never created. He doesn't have a beginning or an end. And, you know, we can't explain that. Okay? It is what it is. Neither do we try to. Okay? We don't try to explain the, 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 the um, what's the word I'm looking for? We don't try to explain the Heavenly Father. How he appeared. Where he appeared. You, you know, that is information beyond our understanding, okay? And I'll leave it at that. But we know that the, the only begotten son had a beginning, all right? He was created by the Heavenly Father. He's the first spirit created, okay? And then you had a succession of spirits, all right? Because we're nothing but spirits and bodies. Let's get back to the video. Not the other way around. So now let's come back over here. Let's listen to some more. Okay, I haven't seen the rest of this video. So at the risk of Apostar maybe going into a slightly different topic, let me go to these scriptures I got put together. And um, that'll be the video. The first... Now, again, these scriptures, they prove that the son of the Heavenly Father is not the Heavenly Father. All right. So in the book of Luke 2 and 49, let's go there. Luke 2 and 49. Okay, Luke 2, and um, I'll start at, uh, the point is in the 49th verse, but I'll start at the, uh, I'll start the 46th verse. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple. Who's the him? Yahweh Shai. And the day, if you read the story, the day was Joseph and Mary who were searching for him frantically, right? Uh, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And I believe he was, he was 12 years old when this incident happened. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou 
thus dealt with us, behold thy father, who was his father? His earthly father. That was Joseph, right? Joseph, the husband of, the husband of Mary, right? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? So wait a minute. If he is the father, why would he make that statement? Vocab Malone. Why would he say to his mother, Don't you know I was about my father's business? And what father is he talking about? He wasn't talking about his earthly father, Joseph. He was talking about his heavenly father, the heavenly father, Yahweh. Just like we're, we're about the father's business. We had great millstone. What's the father's business? This ministry, this truth, that's his business. Okay? So, again, why, if he is the father, why would he make a statement to his mother saying, didn't you know I came to do my father's business? Clearly, he's talking about another person. All right. So think on that one. All right. What's the next one? The next one is uh, John 10 and 29. Again, write these scriptures down. Write these scriptures down. John 10 and 29. Let's read that. I'll start at 27. John 10 and 27. Again, these are the words of Yahweh Shai. Clearly, you see these words written in red, right? My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And by the way, his sheep is the elect, and it's not possible, vocab Malone, it's not possible for you to deceive the very elect, as it is written. Okay? Not every Israelite is created the same. There's a little thing called the elect, all right, these, those are the spirits, the spirits of the elect. They were chosen, the Bible tells us this, they were chosen even before the earth was created. And it's impossible to deceive them, okay? So, reading on, it says, But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as in his elect. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, which is un understanding. And eventually, that's exactly what Yahweh Shai is going to give his elect. He's going to literally give them eternal life because our bodies are going to be changed. The Apostle Paul tells us that in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Once Yahweh Shai delivers his elect, one of the things he's going to do for them is give them eternal life by changing their bodies. All right? Again, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Now, here's the point. My father, again, he's making reference to his father. Clearly, he's making reference. These are the words of Yahweh Shai. He's, he's clearly referencing another being, another person. He said, my father. Okay? My father, which gave them me. He didn't give them to himself. If he was the father, if he is the father, he didn't give the, the elect, he didn't give, him, give them to himself. No, the father gave them to him. Okay, you can't get around this, man. My father, which gave them me, is greater than all. <laughs> Come on, man. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Again, he's clearly referencing another being. I and my father are one, meaning what? One in the same mind. All right. He's not saying that he is his father because uh, there's another scripture, and I believe it's in the list, where he said, my father is greater than I. Okay. So, no, he is not the father. When he said, I and my father are one, meaning in the same mind. Case in point, when a, when a man takes a, a wife, is it not written, they twain? Well, well, wait a minute now. Let's, let's use that example to explain it. They twain. I know, I know the word twain is in there. Twain is a, a, another word for two, right? There we go. This is it right here. Matthew 19 and 5. Again, these are the words of... Uh, Yahweh Shai, right? Well, let me start the fourth verse. 
And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that, that he which made them at the beginning, that he is the heavenly father, right? Made them male and female, right? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. So again, if, if that's the case, if you believe, Vocab Malone, if you believe that the son is the father, right, then obviously you believe that the wife is the husband. <laughs> is not the wife, or let me say it correctly, is not the husband and the wife two separate entities? Right? Sure they are, all right? You got the male and you got the female, right? There you go. So with the father and the son, you got the father, you got the son. What is so hard to understand about that? But now the husband and the wife is supposed to be one flesh, meaning what? One in understanding. Remember when, when the Heavenly Father created Adam and Eve, the Heavenly Father created Eve to be a servant unto Adam. That's what the word woman means. The word woman actually means servant. Her job was to serve her husband, Adam. That was her job. So they became one in flesh, meaning one in understanding. All right? Clearly in the book of Genesis, it says, Her desire shall be to her husband, and the husband shall rule over her. Clearly that's written in Genesis. So they become one in understanding. Okay? And that's what Yahweh Shai meant when he said, I and my father are one. All right? Meaning one in understanding. Okay? All right, so let's go to the next one. John 14 and 28. John 14 and 28. And that's the scripture I was telling you about where Yahweh Shai said his father is greater than him. John 14 and 28. Let me start 27. Peace I, I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart, meaning your mind, be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. You have heard. Now, who is he speaking to? He's speaking to his disciples, which became apostles, right? You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. And that's what we're waiting for. We're waiting for him to come again, right? If ye love me, ye would rejoice because I said, I go unto the Father. For my Father is greater than I. Now, wait a minute. If he is the Father, like you believe, Vocab Malone, and your, your minions that follow you, the wacky-tacky Christians out there, you guys believe that the son is the father. So if the son is the father, why would he make such a statement? Why would he say that his father is greater than him? Why would he say that? <laughs> Let me read that again. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said, I go unto the father for my father is greater than I. Clearly he's referencing another entity that's a lot more powerful than he is clearly that's written all right so that was john 14 and 28 and you know what proved that the heavenly father is greater than the son who raised the son from the grave he laid in the grave for what actually in a tomb for what three days and three nights the question is who raised him out of that grave who the father himself the most high himself raised him out of that grave so that's proof that the father like he said here like yeah i wish i said here the father is greater than i my father is greater than i that's the proof another another example of proof that the father has no beginning and has no end unlike the son the son has a beginning more proof that the father is greater than the son. 
Okay, like he said, my father is greater than I. Okay, so these are facts you can't get around. All right, the next one is John 5 and 45, I believe it is. Fifth chapter of John. Yep, the 45th verse. I'll start the 44, 40, 43rd verse. Again, these are the words of Yahweh Shai. I am come in my father's name and ye receive me not. See, he didn't, he didn't come in his own name. He said he came in his father's name. What's his father's name? Yahweh. His name is Yahweh Shai. He didn't say, I come in the name of Yahweh Shai. No, he said, I come in the, my father's name. His father's name is Yahweh. His name is Yahweh Shai. I am come in my father's name and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye, him ye will receive. How can ye believe which receiveth honor one from another? And seek not the honor that cometh from the Most High only. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. Again, if he's the Father, why is he making that statement? Who is he talking to? He's talking to these, the, you know, those wicked Jews. He said, look, do not think that I will accuse you to the father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. Right. But the point is, do not think that I will accuse you to the father. There's one that accuseth you, even Moses, which Moses was lower than the son. All right. Moses was lower than the son, the only begotten son. The only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, is greater than Moses. That's why Yahweh Shai's testimony was greater than the testimony of Moses. Okay. So he even referenced Moses. But the point is, he said, do not think that I will accuse you to the father. Who's he talking about? His father, Yahweh. So if he was his father, why would he make that statement? All right. The next one is John 9 and 4. Ninth chapter of John, the fourth verse. I must, well, let me start at the third verse. Yahweh I answered, neither have this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of the heavenly father should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me. Again, if he is the father, why would he make that statement? What, did he send himself? The works that he did, where did he get those works from? From himself or did he get it from his father? The miracles that he did, the power that he had, where did he get it from himself or from the father? <laughs> I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. So there you go. I must work the works of him that sent me. He didn't send himself vocab. He was sent by a higher power. That's the father. The one you ignorantly call God, which his name is Yahweh. All right. That was John 9 and 4. Let's get John 17 and 1. This is where Yahweh was praying. And was he praying to himself? <laughs> You see the subhead in there, the high priestly prayer. These words spake Yahweh Shai and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, wait a minute, is he talking to himself? Who's this father that he's talking about? I thought he was the son. He's the son, right? So who was he praying to? He's praying to the father. <laughs> These words spake Yahweh Shai and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. Come on, man. He said, glorify thy son. So if he, if the son is the father, why would he have to ask his father to glorify him if he is the father? He said, glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. So if he is the father, why would he say to the father, could you please glorify me so I can glorify you? 
Uh, the second verse is, Thou hast given him power as thou hast given him power. What, did he give himself power, vocab? Over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Come on, man. Then you jump down to the fourth verse. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have glory. Who is he talking about? His father, Yahweh. He said, look, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. <laughs> Come on, man. Hey, you know what? The whole chapter of John, John, the 17th chapter, cuts you, vocab, cuts you in your doctrine that the son is the father. As the son saying, look, I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work you gave me to do. What, did he give himself the work to do? Then he talks about manifesting the name. The sixth verse, I have manifested thy name. How you get around that, man? You ear not knowing the scriptures. You guys, vocab and your motley crew that follow you, you guys, you ear not knowing the scriptures. It's, it's just that simple, man. Matthew 24 and 36, next scripture. Let's go there. Matthew 24, 36. It says, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. What day? The day when he returns. He doesn't even know the day that he's going to return. The only one that knows is the father. So that proves they're a separate entity. He doesn't even know when he's going to return. But his father knows. So how you get around that vocab? Let's read it again. Matthew 20. You ear not knowing the scriptures, man. Matthew 24 and 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. Not the angels of heaven. Not even the angels know. But my father only. There you go. So they, they, that's proof that they are a separate entity. Matthew 26 and 53. Let's get that. You ear not knowing the scriptures, my friend. Matthew 26 and 53. Well, let me start 52. Then said Yahweh unto him, put up again thy sword. Who's the him? Peter. All right, the head disciples, the head disciple which became an apostle. Put up again thy sword into his place for all that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou, now here's the point, thinkest thou that I cannot pray to my father like he did not where? John 17, right? John 17, the whole chapter of John 17 is a prayer that the son made to the father. It's a prayer that Yahweh Shai made to his father. Thinkest thou that I cannot pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. So, again, if he is the father, he wouldn't have to pray to his father. He wouldn't need to if he is the father. he just command those angels. He said he had to pray to his father for his father to send him those angels. He used that as an as a, as a, as a example. When he was he, he was speaking to Peter, he said, "You don't think I can pray to my father? My father sent twelve legions of angels. And by the way, that's about eighty-four thousand angels. Now, the scriptures say one angel can one angel is what ten thousand times brighter than the sun, something like that. One angel could take out this whole planet Earth, man. Just one angel. Okay, that's how powerful the angels are." What's the next example? Isaiah 53 and 10. <laughs> Isaiah 53 and 10. This is a good one. Now, we know that in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that is, Isaiah was prophesying of Yahweh Shai. He wrote this. This was written, what, more than 700 years before Yahweh Shai came on the scene. Isaiah was on the scene prophesying, right? Around seven, what, 700 BC, somewhere around there. 
Isaiah 53 and 10, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. So what is Isaiah talking about? He's talking about the heavenly father, Yahweh. The term Lord here, when you look up and look it up in the Hebrew, you won't see Yahweh Shai, you'll see Yahweh, which is the father, right? So it he says it pleased the father to bruise him. So did the son bruise himself? If he is the father, right? According to you, vocab, did he bruise himself? Who bruised him? Who put the spirit on the soldiers to slap him? You know, the wicked chief priests to assault him? The heavenly father did. He put the spirit on them to do it, to fulfill prophecy. All right? That's, what, that's why it says, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He have put him to grief. What, did he put himself to grief? When thou shalt make his, his soul an offering for sin. So what, the, the heavenly father, his soul was an offering for sin? Or was it the son? <laughs> you err not knowing the scriptures, man. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. In whose hand? The son. Okay, which his name is Yahweh Shai. You err not knowing the scriptures, man. Acts 7 and 56. Let's, let's get that. I want to see you get around that one. Acts 7 and... Really, none of these scriptures you can get around. None of them. None of these precepts that I've put together. You can't gainsay them. You try to, but you end up making yourself look foolish. Acts 7 and uh, 56. Let's read that. Now, this is a, well, this is a vision that Stephen had as he was being put to death. He was being stoned, right? He saw a vision. Let's read it. Acts 7 and 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, Stephen, being full of the Holy Spirit, looking up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of the heavenly father and Yahawashai standing on the right hand of the heavenly father. Come on, man. Come on, vocab. Come on. Stop it. Stop it, man. Stop it. You and your motley crew, stop it. You, you guys, you err not knowing the scriptures. Here's a vision that Stephen had where he actually saw the glory of the Heavenly Father and he saw Yahawashai, which you call, ignorantly called Jesus Christ, Jesus. He saw him standing on the right hand of the Heavenly Father. Now how the hell, <laughs> how the hell can they be the same entity? No, they are separate entities. Okay? And he confirms it, Stephen confirms it by saying this, and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son, the Son, not the Father, the Son of Man, standing on the right hand of the Heavenly Father. There you go. The firstborn of all creation, standing on the right hand of the Heavenly Father, the Heavenly Father himself. His son is standing right by his side. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's too easy, man. And finally, Revelation, the fifth chapter. Now, what's beautiful about Revelation, the fourth chapter, it goes into the power of the Heavenly Father himself. And there's a vision that the Apostle John got in the island of Patmos, right? Now, when you go into the fifth chapter, it talks about this entity that came to the heavenly father himself sitting on the throne and took a book from him the book symbolizes the bible let's read it uh again you see the book with seven seals which symbolizes the bible pretty much revelation 5 and 1 and it's sealed to those that are not part of the elect it's sealed to them meaning the understanding of the book the understanding of the book is only given to the elect to everybody else, it's sealed. That's why it said the book was sealed. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne. Now, if you read the fourth chapter, you'd know who that's talking about. You'd know that's the heavenly father himself. He's sitting on the throne. The heavenly father himself. The one that Yahweh Shai said is greater than him, right? And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. That book represents the Bible. 
And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof to the elect? Open the book means to give them the understanding of that book. That's what that means. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book. Now keep in mind, Apostle John is seeing this vision. This is, he's like he's watching a movie. He's actually seeing this vision. Right? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open, to read the book, neither to look thereon, thereon to explain the book, right? And one of the elders saith unto me, now if you, again, if you read the fourth chapter, you'd know that's talking about one of the 24 elders, the heavenly father himself, he has part of his counsel. He has 24 angels that are around him that all they do is praise him, all right? It's like way out, okay? All they do is praise him. That's their job, okay? 24 elders, all right? That's for another video for another time. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. Who is that? Vocab. Is that not the one you call Jesus Christ, which his name is Yahweh Shai? Have prevailed to open the book, so we get the understanding of the book through Yahweh Shai, and to loose the seven seals thereof. Okay? Now I'm going to jump down to the seventh verse. Right? And he came, who's the he? The one you call Jesus Christ, which his name is Yahweh Shai. He came and took the book out of the right hand, now in Stephen's vision, he saw the Lord where? On the right hand, standing on the, standing on the right hand of the Heavenly Father. Standing on the right hand of the Heavenly Father, meaning standing to the right of the Heavenly Father. In, in Stephen's vision, that's what he saw. He saw Yahweh Shai standing on the right side of the Heavenly Father, right? Now in this vision, Apostle John sees Yahweh Shai coming and taking the book, which symbolizes the Bible, right? And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne. Again, who's that? Who's that, vocab? You guys here not knowing the scriptures, man. You don't know the scriptures. The reason why you don't know the scriptures is because the Holy Spirit is not supping with you. The Holy Spirit is not sup with you. The Holy Spirit has not given you the understanding, man. Okay? If it did, you'd know these precepts. You'd know these scriptures. And you'd know for certain that the Son is not the Heavenly Father, man. There's the Son and there's the Father. Here we see the Son coming and taking the book out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne. That's the Heavenly Father. Okay? Let's keep reading. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts, which were their angels, all right, to explain it, uh, to, to a, give it a simple explanation, their angels, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders, angels, fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. Yeah. Okay. They fell down before the lamb. The 24 elders, they already fall down before the Heavenly Father. They do that all the time. But this time, they're falling down before the Lamb. Why? Because, as they said, as you read on, uh, Yahweh Shai came on the earth. He sacrificed himself. So he received that position. That's why Yahweh Shai made a statement. All power. Let's get that. You guys here not knowing the scriptures, man. All power is given. Let's read that. Here it is right here. Matthew 28. This is this is right after Yahweh Shai uh, sacrificed himself and was risen again. He made the statement. He said, And Yahweh Shai came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So we just read how all power was given unto him in heaven. All right, he was he was uh he was praised in heaven. He was praised by the other angels for what he did on the earth. We just read it. All right, uh, Revelation the fifth chapter. 
So he made a statement. He said, all power is given unto me. What, did he give himself that power? Or was the power given unto him by his father? These are facts you can't get around, man. All right, on that note, I'll leave it there. Hopefully, you brothers and you sisters that believe in this knowledge, this truth, hopefully you were edified. And it's on to the next video. The, the next video I'm going to deal with, uh, and uh, the brother from Vegas, he was going into it. And I'm pretty sure Elder Pastor was going into it, even though I haven't fully, I haven't watched his Elder Pastor's video in full, which I'm going to do, Lord will, after I'm done with this video. Uh, the next topic will be uh, how the Heavenly Father is the creation. The Heavenly Father, uh, Salaki, the, the Son of the Heavenly Father is the creation of the Heavenly Father. Okay? Let me say that again. The Son is the creation of the Heavenly Father. There's so many scriptures to prove that. I already gave you an, uh, uh, an example with the firstborn of, of the, uh, in the book of Colossians. The firstborn of the creation of the Heavenly Father. That's Yahweh Shai. Okay, so on that note, on to the next one.